Hallelujah. I showed up to give God thanks. Hallelujah. Glory to God because God is wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a mighty God. Hallelujah. And I thank him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I bless the Lord today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just showed up to give God glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I showed up. Messiah. I showed up to bless his name. Hallelujah. Because God is a keeper. Hallelujah. You want to be kept. And I bless his name today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. We thank God. Amen. For this is yet another. Amen. Youth Sunday. Come on. Let's thank the Lord for our youth on today. Amen. Glory to God. Let's thank the Lord for them. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask Brother J.C. on to come. Amen. Glory to God. And he's going to give us our scripture reading on this morning. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's receive him as he comes. Amen. Glory to God. Come on, J.C. on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I read, I'm going to be reading John 3, 16. Yes. For God so loved the world mm -hmm. that he given, gave his mm -hmm. only begotten son that whosoever believed in, in him yes. should not perish but had ever lasting life. Good job. Good job. Amen. Let's give Brother J.C. on the hand clap. Amen for the reading of God's word. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible says, uh, uh, remember thy youth. Amen. Remember the Lord thy God in the days of thy youth. Amen. And so we thank God, Brother J.C. on. Amen for reading the scripture. Amen. On today. Amen. We bless God. Amen. We're getting ready to have our inspirational moment. Amen. Coming from our brother. Amen. Jeremiah. Amen. He's coming with the word. Amen. To share with us God's people. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's receive brother Jeremiah. Amen. As he comes. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Topic today will be practice what you preach. Scripture today I'll be coming from is James 1 and 22 and Matthew 23 and 3. Okay. James 1 and 22 says, But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Matthew 23 and 3 says, All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not ye after their works. For they say and do not. Hypocrites are people who pretend to be something that they're not. They say one thing and do the complete opposite. They act one way somewhere and act different somewhere else. We as Christians have to follow and be examples of Jesus Christ. The way we act and the things we say should reflect our faith. We as people are good about telling others how to live but fail to follow our own instructions. We got to walk the walk and talk the talk. In Matthew 23, we see Jesus speaking to the crowd and his disciples. He tells them to do what the Pharisees and the scribes teach them to do, but not do, but don't be like them as they are not practicing what they're preaching. We saw an example of talking the talk, but not walking the walk. But why, but why must we practice what we preach? We do this to reflect our faith and be an example of Christ to the rest of the world. We are the light of the world. People should be attracted to us based on the way we live. Right. Monkey see, monkey do. monkey do. When children hear things from their parents, they tend to go around saying the same thing, not knowing whether it's appropriate or not. Okay. Whether we know it or not, many people are watching us, especially God, right. which means we have to be careful in every aspect. Mm -hmm. But how do we practice what we preach? One of the most important things is to watch what we say. People can tell, people can tell the type of person you are just by the use of your words. Our actions should reflect those of Jesus and what the Bible has taught us. Yes. We are taught to love Jesus and love others. Remember that we are not to glorify the devil. Mm -hmm. The way we act at school and work should be the same we act at church. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, are you walking the walk as well as talking the talk? Mm -hmm. Remember to practice what you preach. Thank you.
gates and be lifted up, the everlasting door, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Oh, lift up your head. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lift up your head. Hallelujah. For the King of glory shall come in. Oh, God. Hallelujah. When he come in, everybody gonna know. Everybody gonna see. Hallelujah. That he's God. And he's God all by himself. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. 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 Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Ain't no God like Jehovah. Oh, He's still moving. He's still working miracles. He's still having our blessing. There's no God like Jehovah. Oh, he's the first and the last. Oh, God. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the ending. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Whoa. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. He specializes in miracles. Hallelujah. That's his specialty. You know how we go to certain doctors and certain doctors are classified as a specialist. Come on here. Hallelujah. But Jesus is a specialist in miracles. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's working miracles. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, God. It's something about when you go to the specialist because they specialize in that thing and their co-pay is a little bit higher. Hallelujah. Because your, the level of service is high. Oh, God. Your level of service is higher for the specialist. But I come to tell you, glory to God, that God's going to give us the highest level. Y'all ain't talking of service. Come on here. Hallelujah. He's going to do it in ways that you least not expect. Hallelujah. Glory to God because he specializes and miracles. Hallelujah. He specializes. He specializes. Oh, yeah. He specializes in miracles. Hallelujah. When you least expect it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, we give you glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you honor. Oh, yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Savior. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When you least expect. God going to show up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mary and Martha was crying about their brother. But when they least expected, y'all ain't talking. Hallelujah. The resurrector showed up. Come on here. The life giver showed up. Glory to God. When they least expected, glory to God. It was all in their emotions. They were all in their feelings. Come on here. Hallelujah. But God showed, Jesus showed up on the scene. Hallelujah. And told Lazarus to leave. Come on here. He told him to come out of his grave clothes. Everything that's been holding him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He said, live. Come on here. Oh, Lord. Lazarus, I command you to live. Hallelujah. And everything that was holding you, I call it to cease and desist. I call it to go now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The miracle worker is here. Hallelujah. He's here. He's here. Hallelujah. He's here. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah, glory to God. I dare somebody to holler Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Something happened when you're calling. Somebody holler Jesus. Oh, he'll come on the scene if you're calling. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, that son of David, Jesus, Jesus, the bright and morning star, y'all ain't calling, come on here, hallelujah, I need somebody to call Jesus, hallelujah, the wheel in the middle of the wheel, somebody holler Jesus, hallelujah, glory to God, the great I am, Jesus, hallelujah, we give him glory, we give him honor, and we give him praise. Hallelujah, we thank him today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, God is good to us. Hallelujah, glory to God. We cannot afford to sit down on God. Hallelujah, glory to God. Every chance we get, hallelujah, glory to God, ought to be a moment to bless his name. Hallelujah, every opportunity we get, hallelujah, ought to be the opportunity to bless his name. Hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah, what a great God, what a mighty God. Hallelujah, we certainly serve. Amen. We bless the Lord today for the Lord is kind unto us. He's merciful. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. Y'all not talking back to me. He's merciful. Yes, he is. Glory to God. And we bless his name today. Amen. We bless the Lord. We do honor the apostle and her absence. Amen. Thank the Lord for Elder Lynch. Thank the Lord for each and every one of you. Amen. On today. Amen. We bless the Lord for the Lord is good. And his mercy is everlasting and his truth. Amen. Endure to all generations. Amen. We want to acknowledge, amen, this month. We have not had Pink Sunday this month, and I believe it was the other Sunday. Amen. So I wore my pink today, amen, to represent, amen, Pink Sunday. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. As we observe, amen, those that have 
uh, uh, been dealing with breast cancer, amen, for its Breast Cancer Awareness Month, amen. We will encourage all of you women especially, amen, not leaving the men out because um, they have found that men also uh, can get breast cancer. So we want to encourage you, amen, to our women to make sure, amen, that you're staying on top of your mammograms. Make sure, amen, that you're doing your monthly checks, amen. Praise the Lord, amen, with your breast, amen. Glory to God, if you feel dimples, lumps, bumps, amen, that you didn't feel before, amen. Please make you an appointment, amen, to see, amen, your doctor, amen, because they have discovered that early detection, Amen is the best. Amen. And so we want to catch things early if we can. Amen. So please make stay on top of that. We want to also honor, amen, those soldiers, amen, that have gone on, amen, to be with the Lord, amen, that has suffered with breast cancer, amen. We want to honor them. Would y'all clap your hands for those who fought the fight, amen. Glory to God, amen. We thank God for them, amen. Glory to God, and we honor them, amen. We want to just again make you aware, amen, that it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, Amen. And we bless God. Please, please, please. Early detection is the best. Amen. Please stay on top. There are uh, um, places in the city of Charlotte, especially, and there should be some, amen, in your city if you're watching online. Amen. There should be some places that offer, amen, free mammograms, amen, if you don't have insurance, amen. So don't let that be an excuse, amen. Glory to God, because the truth of the matter is that bill will get paid at some point in time, amen. But we want you to live, amen. You don't have to die early, amen, because you didn't have no insurance, amen. But we want you to take the opportunity, amen, to see about yourself, amen. We want you to know your sister girls over here is rooting for you, amen, that you see about your self. Amen. And take care of yourself. Amen. I want to also acknowledge, amen, this month being Clergy Appreciation Month. Um, it started out as being Pastors Appreciation Month, uh, but it's Clergy Appreciation Month. And so I want to say to all of you, especially to those in the building um, and those that's watching online, amen, that watch us faithfully, I want to say to all of you, thank you, amen, for affording me the opportunity to serve you. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you for affording me the opportunity to be, amen, the pastor here, amen, and to serve you. And so I cannot do it without any of you, amen. And so I want to appreciate you today, amen, glory to God, because you do help to make it somewhat, amen, an easier, amen, glory to God. Not all of you are operating in your full capacity, which you should be doing, amen, but I thank you for the part, amen, that you do play, amen, and I thank you so very much because, again, I can't pastor a, ch a church of chairs, amen. Amen. I have to pastor a group of people. And so I thank the Lord again for all of you. Amen. Today. Amen. For your support. Amen. For your love. For your prayers. Amen. For whatever you do. Amen. Here at the ministry. Thank you. Amen. I want to say thank you. Amen. On today. Amen. Come on and give yourselves a hand clap. Amen. Thank you too. Amen. Sister Candy online. Amen. A great supporter. Cousin Janine online most of the times. Thank you for being a great supporter. Amen. Thank you. I want to salute you all to our faithful listeners. Amen. Sister Edwards and some others. Amen. That's typically online. Amen. That we know that are watching. Amen. Thank you for supporting this ministry. Thank you for supporting me. Amen. Glory to God. And I appreciate you on today. Amen. Come on. Let's clap your hands for Jesus. Amen. We thank God. Let's thank the Lord for our youth on today. Come on. Hallelujah. Let's bless the Lord for them. Let's thank the Lord for Sister Katora. Amen. An awesome dance. Amen. Glory to God. We bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. I thank the Lord for our youth. Amen. That have a mind. Amen. To serve the Lord. That want to serve the Lord in a day and an hour. Amen. Such as this. And so we give God praise for them. Amen. It's time for the word of God. Amen. But the Bible declared that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And certainly today we have a treat, amen, of our own, amen, Elder Calvin Lynch, amen. He's coming to break the bread of life, <clears throat> amen. I want y'all to do like we normally do. Please don't just sit there and look at him, 
Amen. Get in the service. Amen. Get in the word with the word of God. Now, if he's preaching the word, get with the word. If he's not preaching the word, then don't you say nothing. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Because we preachers be saying stuff sometimes, y'all. And we be like, go ahead, go ahead. And they don't be saying nothing. Amen. Glory to God. And y'all will get with nothing. Amen. But get with the word of God. Amen. Set, give him your hearty amens. Amen. Glory to God. And give him, go ahead, elder. Amen. And I believe he'll preach the word. And I believe he'll share, amen, what he has on this morning. Amen. We're standing all over the building. Let's receive Elder Lynch. Amen. Glory to God as he come to break the bread of life. Come on, clap your hands for him. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for being in the house of the Lord. Amen. We thank him for his mercy. And we thank him for his grace. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. In the house of the Lord. I promise you all I won't be before you long. Amen. Just want to encourage the saints, the people of God today. Amen. In the word of God. Amen. 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 We do honor Pastor Lynch. Amen. Amen. To the whole household of faith. Amen. To our youth today. I hope our youth did such an awesome job. Amen. Such a wonderful Amen. job. Amen. Amen. Brother J.C.R. with the scriptures. Brother Jeremiah with the youth inspiration. Sister Katora with the dance. Amen. Amen. So we thank you, young people. Amen. Amen. For doing what you do for the Lord. Amen. The Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. Go with me quickly. Two particular passages of scriptures that are very familiar or that we've heard of or seen or read several times. Um, I want you to put your finger in Genesis chapter 18 and verse number 14. And then we also want to go to the book of Mark chapter 5 and verse 35. Genesis chapter 18 and verse number 14. We first of all want to read the book of Mark, chapter 5, and begin at verse 35. If you have it, say amen. 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 Everybody got it? Mark, chapter number 5, verse number 35 and 36 says, While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why trouble thou the master any farther? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. Uh -huh. Let me read that again. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why trouble the master any farther? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, but only believe. And then let's flip back to Genesis chapter 18, verse number 14, which says, Is there anything too hard for God, for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return unto thee, according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Amen. Really want to just read the first few clauses of that. It says, is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return unto thee. Amen. Yes. Amen. I want to use a very simple subject. It sounds very simple, but it's very profound this morning. If you would just look at somebody next to you and just tell them, if you believe it, God can do it. If you believe it, God can do it. Very simple. Sounds very easy to do. Sounds very light. Sounds like an easy task. But sometimes believing in God is one of the hardest things that we as God's people are able to do. Amen. Sometimes believing in God seems like it's almost impossible. I can't hear nobody. Amen. Amen. Seems like it's almost impossible. As we enter this book of Mark and this fifth chapter, we find out that Jesus deals with a man that lived in a tomb or in a graveyard. And this man was possessed by many demons 
Uh, no one, nobody could hold the man down. Nobody could tie him down. Nobody could bind him up because of the demonic activity. No one could tame this man. And the Bible says that all night and all day he laid in the tombs or he laid amongst the dead in the cemetery crying and cutting himself. But he came, his situation seemed like there was no hope or there was no help for him. But he came in contact with a man named Jesus. Somebody say he came in contact with a man named Jesus. Jesus was able to cast the demons out of the man and allow them to enter into a herd of swine or a herd of pigs that ran into the sea and choked themselves. And I could imagine that before the man was delivered that people who came across his path probably thought it was impossible for this man to be set free. The Bible says he was often bound with fetters or often bound with shackles and chains. So none of them believed enough that the devils could be cast out of him. So they tried to bind him and they tried to hold him down. Yeah. They thought that was the only thing that could be done for the man is just to hold him down, just to keep him down from cutting himself and from crying and from hurting himself. But nobody believed that the man could be delivered. Yeah, right. If you believe it, God can do it. That's right. After Jesus left from there, he came in contact with one of the synagogue leaders by the name of Jairus. And Jairus was coming to the Lord for a hurried situation. He said, my daughter is sick, and I need you to come and touch my daughter. Amen. Now, Jairus had enough faith to believe that if Jesus got there on time, that his daughter would be healed. Amen. He believed that if Jesus made it to his house and laid his physical hands on his daughter, then his daughter would be healed. He believed that if Jesus made an entrance into his house, Amen. And into the daughter's room that everything was going to be all right. Yes. <coughs> but guess what? What? His agreement, and Jesus even agreed to go with Jairus, and, but his agreement to go with Jairus or Jairus was intersected by a woman with an issue of blood. Yeah. Now, he, Jesus then agreed to go to the man's house. He then agreed to heal the man, to go and touch the man's daughter. And I'm pretty sure that Jairus was kind of excited and he was even more hopeful and just glad that somebody was going, that Jesus was going to come and see about his daughter. But all of a sudden, where did this woman come from? Yes. Why is she intersecting my blessing? Uh -huh. Why is she messing up the program? Yes. Why is she messing up the parade? Now, Jesus is on his way to see me. He ain't got time for you. He on his way to my house. By the time, and then, uh, excuse me, the Bible says that the woman came up to Jesus and she had to make her way through the crowd because everybody was around him and everybody was trying to touch him and everybody was trying to get his attention. And Jesus was supposed to be going to Jairus' house. But everybody was around him, but he got intersected by this woman. And the Bible says that she was unclean, but she made her way through the crowd. And what she did, we're all very familiar with the scripture. What she did, she thrown the hem of his garment and she touched it and said, if I can just only touch the hem of his garment, then I can be made whole. If you believe it, then God can do it. Now, imagine what happened to Jairus' belief. Where he done turned around and saw the woman intersecting what was supposed to belong to him. Yeah. His belief level might have went down just a little bit. His belief level may have left him. His belief level may have said, well, maybe it's not time. Because something else done took place. How many of us have been on our way to the blessing? How many of us have already almost touched the blessing, tasted the blessing, almost had the blessing in our hand, only to be dis disappointed or intersected by something else? Yeah. If you believe it, God can do it. And so Jesus turned around and we know the story. He told the woman, uh, told the crowd, who touched me? And his disciples said, now all of these people are around you, are you going to ask who touched you? And he said it was a woman's faith that actually got his attention. Jesus. It's our faith that actually gets Jesus' attention. Right. Whether he's here physically, amen, whether he's at your house, whether he's at my house, whether he's at your house, whether he's in the building, it's your faith that causes his power 
to be activated. Amen. But by the time all of this was said and done, someone came from Jairus' house to announce, your daughter is dead. Uh -huh. What happened to his belief level at that point? What happens when your dreams die? What happens when all hope is lost? What happened when you left out of church all on high and shouting and glad and just knew it was going to happen for you only to find out it ain't going to happen the way that you thought it was going to happen? Jesus. Dead. Jesus. Gone. Mm -hmm. And then we begin to think in our minds, well, maybe God didn't say it after all. Mm -hmm. Maybe I misunderstood what God intended. Maybe the prophet was prophesying to the person behind me and they just looked like they were prophesying to me. Maybe the word was for somebody else that was sitting in the back and everybody was just looking at me because I looked like I needed a word. Oh dead. Mm -hmm. Dead. They said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the master any farther? Mm -hmm. Now, how many of us have actually believed God for something and didn't see it happen and we stopped going to him? We stop trusting him. We stop praising him. We stop seeking him. We stop calling on him. All because it seemed like our situation was dead. Seemed like all hope was gone. Seemed like it was over. Yes. So we just say, why trouble him any farther? Mm -hmm. yeah. God, I ain't even going to bother you. Mm -hmm. I ain't even going to pray. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to testify. I'm not even going to sing a song. I'm not even going to pray a prayer. But if you believe it, God can, do it God can do it if you believe it. And Jesus overheard them telling Jairus that his daughter was dead and not to bar bar bother Jesus any further. But listen to what Jesus said to him. He said, be not afraid, only believe. If you believe it, guess what? God can do it. Even in the crowd, even in the noise, even in the bad announcement, he's still telling him, only believe. Yes. The situation looked hopeless. The situation looked like it was over. It looked like we didn't need Jesus' help anymore. It looked like Jesus couldn't do anything else for us. It looked like our plans had changed. It looked like the will of God had changed. And you telling me to only believe? Yes, only believe. My daughter's dead. We done called Alexander Funeral Home to come and pick her up. Yeah. She's dead. Mm. Why bother Jesus anymore? Mm -hmm. Unless he gonna preach the funeral. Jesus. Unless he gonna give remarks. Unless he gonna carry the casket. Mm -hmm. Why bother him anymore? Mm -hmm. Saints of God, when we look at the word believe, the word believe means to have confidence in or firm faith in the truth the existence or the reliability of something. Yes. To have confidence in or firm faith in the truth. Mm -hmm. The existence or the reliability of something. We have got to have a firm faith in what's true. Yes. We always say don't, don't believe what you see, but see what you believe. believe. And don't be moved by what you see. Because it's not really what it looks like. If you believe it, God can do it. That's right. Before the word believe, what Jesus said, the other word that he said was only. Which means without others or without anything further. In other words, Jesus was, all that Jesus was saying is that this is all you got to do. He didn't say give me a thousand dollars. He didn't say sell all that you have. He didn't say do this and do that. He didn't say spin around three times. He didn't say run through the back of the church. But he said if you only, if you only believe. If you only believe. The Bible tells us that with men things seem to be impossible. But with God all things are possible. We said to believe means to put our faith in truth. Hebrews takes it a little farther by saying, now faith is the substance of things that are hoped for. It's the evidence of things that our eyes cannot see. All you got to do is have a little bit of faith. But you see, faith requires belief. The Bible says that faith without works is dead. If you have faith and you don't believe, then there's a problem somewhere. Two and two is not adding up. 
There's a problem somewhere if you have faith and you don't believe. If you're praying to God, but you're not really expecting it to happen. Yeah. If you're asking him to do it, but you ain't really that confident that he's going to do it for you. Yeah. Man's philosophy says it's too simple. Man's philosophy says it's just too simple for it to happen. But Jesus said to Jairus, only believe. Yeah. I know you might can't believe it because it looks like it's too hard or too big for man to handle. You might not believe it because it seems like it's just too impossible for it to work out. But I want you to know this morning or this afternoon that here again, when things seem to be impossible with men, all things are possible with God. Yeah. But there's a, there's a disclaimer there. Yeah. And the disclaimer is if you only believe. It sounds so simple, but it's so profound because sometimes it's hard for us to believe. Sometimes it's hard for us to figure it out. Sometimes it's hard for us to accept. But he asked Abraham, even in his old age and Sarah, in their old age, is there anything is there anything too hard for God? How many of y'all think it's something too hard for God that God can't do? That God just ain't going to do. That he just, he just not going to do it. He can't do it. He don't have the power to do it. And this woman is almost 100 years old. And he going to tell her, you're going to have a son? And what did Sarah do? She laughed at him. And that's what we do. We may not physically laugh, but we laugh in our doubt. We laugh in our disbelief. We start laughing and just start walking away from God. We start laughing in our hopelessness. We start laughing because we don't really think it's going to happen. We don't believe. We don't believe we're going to have no baby and we're 100 years old. We don't believe God is going to bring us out and the doctor said there's nothing else that I can do. We don't believe that we're going to get the vehicle and the credit man said you can't get it. We don't believe we're going to get the house. And the man said, you don't have enough to your name to get it. Jesus. But if you only, if you only believe. You see, we don't ask for it because we don't think God can do it. We put limits on God because it's too hard for us. Our little minds are just settled on what we can see. Yeah. But let me tell you today, we serve a God that can just speak. And a world comes into existence. We have a God that can move mountains and valleys out of the way. We serve a God that can rise, say rise, take up your bed and walk, and instantly people are healed. We serve a God that can say peace, be still, and immediately the winds and the waves obey. We serve a God that can say come out of him, and demons have to flee. We serve a God. So what makes you think that God can't handle your little situation? What makes you think that God can't do it? You see, sometimes it seems as if your blessing is almost there, that you're on the verge of the breakthrough. And just like the situation with Jairus, sometimes it comes along and something interrupts your blessings. And now it seems like you're being put on the back burner. It seems like now the woman with the issue of blood has jumped in front of you. Now she's gotten Jesus' attention, and it seems to have caused there to be a delay in your situation. Now, you done jumped in front of me. Now, I was at the front of the line. And you done jumped in front of me. Now, I got to wait again. Yeah. Now, I got to do this again. You ain't supposed to break line. Tell somebody you ain't supposed to break line. Break How many of you know that God is able to do anything? Yes, yes. Even if somebody jumps in front of you. Hey, man, it don't mean that God ain't going to do what he said he was going to do. Even if somebody breaks the line, even if somebody jumps in the pool ahead of you, guess what? God has a time, God has a place, and God has a purpose for your life. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. His word is his word. And it cannot be denied. Then we start thinking that, well, maybe this can't be done after all. Maybe it was, tr it was true, too true from the get-go. But I want to let you know this morning, saints, that just because your blessing or your breakthrough has been delayed doesn't mean that it's been denied. Right. Keep on believing because if you believe it, then God can do it. Yeah. There's a saying that says somewhere between here and there, God is going to move. Yeah. 
So somewhere here between my believing, my intersection, or my interruption, amen, God is still going to move. Amen. Because God is a man that cannot lie. Neither is he the son of man that he shall repent. Have he said it? Shall he not also do it if he spoke it? Is he not going to bring it to pass? But you've got to believe. It doesn't matter if you have to wait all day or if you have to wait all night. It doesn't matter if he doesn't come through when you think he should. It doesn't matter if you have to wait another year. Just keep waiting. Why do I need to keep waiting? Because the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So guess what? Even in your waiting, God is still there for you. Even in your waiting, he's still giving you strength to hold on. Even in your waiting, he's still, amen, giving you hope and giving you joy. Say, hey, I'm still going to do this thing. Even in your waiting. Just keep waiting on him. Yes, Wait on the Lord, the Bible says, and be of Good bad courage, courage. courage, be of weak courage, courage. be of little courage. courage. Says be of good courage. Yes. And he's going to do what? He shall strengthen thy heart. And he says, wait, I say, on the Lord. And keep believing because if you believe, yes. if you believe it, then God can do it. So the announcement comes. That your daughter is dead. Mm -hmm. Why trouble the master any farther? Now it seems like the situation is over and there's nothing else to be done. What you were believing God to do, it seems like it's gone the opposite way. Jesus. So what do you do when what you were expecting God to do happens something totally different or goes in the opposite way? What do you do when you don't see what God has promised you? What do you do when it's not happening as fast as you thought it was going to happen? What do you do when somebody else jumps in front of you and messes up what you thought was God's plan for your life? What do you do? You ask God to save your unsaved loved ones, but instead they get locked back up in jail. But we don't see the salvation in that. But guess what? God may be saving their life to keep them from going to an early grave. You prayed and asked God for the new car, but they still turned you down. Maybe God is just waiting to give you the job to be able to afford it. And then you can get the vehicle. You thought you were going to get the house, but they said your credit wasn't good enough. Well, maybe God didn't want you in that particular neighborhood. Maybe there was a new house being built across town, and he was just giving you a little more time to move into the right area. You prayed and your report, you prayed that your report comes back with good news, but now they say you got an incurable disease. What do you do? What do you do? Jesus. Tell somebody, you keep on believing. You keep on believing. I'm a firm believer today, saints, that if you keep believing in God, the more you begin to believe in God, the more you'll take your mind off of your situation and off of your problem, and you'll begin to give God a praise. And when you get in harmony and start praising God with what you believe, amen, regardless of how it's worked out, you're going to be satisfied because you understand it to be the will of God. Jesus. We prayed for my mother that she would be healed on this side of the grave. Amen. But she died. She physically left this world. She died. We wanted her to stay here, but she died. But what did we do? We kept on believing. Yes, yes. We kept, ah, my son, though, we kept on praising. Amen. Because we knew it to be the will of God. Amen. We knew it to be the will of God. So even when it doesn't happen the way that you thought it was going to happen, your belief ought to push you into a praise. And your praise ought to push you in harmony with God's will and what God says. And then we can accept what God allows. Somebody said that just when you thought it was over, here comes Jesus stepping in. Jairus thought it was over. But Jesus stepped in just in time. You have to understand today that our time is not God's time. You have to understand that he may not move in your time or he may move out of your time, but just know that he's going to be there right on time. Just when it looks like death has come, 
just when it looks like defeat has overtaken your situation, here comes Jesus and says, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So Jesus and Jairus, along with Peter, James, and John, they continued on to Jairus' house. What you going to his house for? This girl is dead. Jesus. It's over. Mm -hmm. And back in Bible times, they hired professional mourners. Right. And so by the time that Jesus and his boys and Jairus had all got there, hey amen, all of these people were crying mm -hmm. around the girl. Nobody was believing her to get back up. Nobody had the faith to believe that she could be healed. Nobody had the faith to believe that she could be resurrected. Jesus. When they get there, they find the mass of confusion. They find all these people weeping and wailing. Neighbors bringing casseroles over to feed the family. The florist already delivering the flowers. And all these professional mourners weeping and wailing and people sitting around the house and saying, baby, it's going to be okay. Baby, she's in a better place. It's all right to cry. Just hold on. We're going to be here for you. If anything we can do for you, let us know. But ain't nobody said, get up. Jesus. Nobody said, I believe God that he can raise her up from the dead. Yes. So in the midst of all of that and all that's going on, this is what Jesus said. And this is how it happens for us sometimes. Jesus said, why is all of this confusion and wailing going on? This damsel is not dead, but sleeping. In our situations, it seems like it's so bleak and so hopeless that and God sends a word, it just don't make sense. Now they done told me, God, I can't get this car. And you telling me to go to the car lot. That don't make sense. You telling me to go get this house and the uh, realtor man already told me that I can't get the house. You telling me to go and get this degree. And they are already saying I don't have the credits and I don't have the grades to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. You telling me to do this and to do that. And I've already got the negative report that it can't happen. Right, right. And Jesus says there's such a word that just seems to be so off point. But if you only believe, mm -hmm. God can do it. If you believe it, he can. He told Moses, God told Moses as the children of Israel were coming out of the wilderness, amen, that you're going to go across the Red Sea. Uh -huh. Now, how crazy is that? You got this big old body of water, and you got these enemies behind us, and you telling us to go across this water? Yeah, that's what he yeah. said. Sometimes you got to just step out on faith. Sometimes you just got to take a chance with God. Sometimes you just got to close your eyes and go for what you know. Because if you step out towards the water, before you know it, the water is going to rise and dry land is going to happen and cause you to be able to go across. Y'all right. missed that. Now we got it. If you just step out on what he said, don't look at the situation for what it is, but just step out on it. Right. And by the time you get to the wherever you need to get, he'll cause the water to rise and dry land will be there waiting Amen. on you Amen. to give you the victory. But Jesus said, this damsel is not dead. She just sleep. But Jesus, by Jesus saying this and using the word sleep, it indicated that the girl's situation was only temporary. And I come to proclaim today to somebody that your situation is only temporary. This is not the end. Failure is not final. It's not over until God says it's over. Your situation is only temporary. Just keep on believing and just keep on trusting God. That dream that you had that seemed to have died, it's time to wake it back up again. That gift that you had that seems like it can't be used anymore, it's time to wake up the gift that's on the inside of you. That hope that you had at one point in time that seemed to have lost you, it's time to wake it back up. It's time to wake it back up because it's only temporary what you're going through. It's only temporary what you're experiencing. It's only temporary what the enemy is trying to do. But he wants you to think that your situation is permanent. But it's just sleep. It's just sleep. The Bible says that they laughed him to scorn. Now here goes some more people laughing at Jesus. Just like Sarah did. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of laughter going on, but ain't nothing funny. Mm -hmm. 
a lot of laughter going on, but ain't no comedian in the room. No, so but we're going to get the last laugh. Yes, yes, yes. We're going to get the last one. Yeah. Amen. The enemy might be laughing right now, but guess what? It ain't over until God yeah. says it's over. Yeah. It's not over until God says that it's done. Yeah. But the thing I like about Jesus, now they standing here laughing at him. Jesus here by himself with Peter, James, and John. But the thing I like about Jesus is that he kept his cool. Jesus. He didn't cuss. No. He didn't trip. No. He didn't cry. Mm -hmm. He didn't get scared. He didn't go off and retaliate. He didn't beat nobody up. He didn't go and tell nobody off. But what he did was simply put them out. That's all. He put them out. Sometimes you got to put these people and these situations and these thoughts and these happenstance and whatever you're dealing with that's intersecting your blessing. You got to put it out. Put it out of your mind. Put it out of your heart. Put it out of your spirit. Put them out of your life. Disconnect from those that are not believing. Disconnect from those that are not going the same way that you're going. Disconnect from those things that are causing you to believe that God can't do what he said he was going to do. Put them out. Put them out. Guess what? You have the authority and you have the say-so to decide what stays right. and how long it stays. So if you agree with what the enemy is saying, it ain't going to happen. Mm -hmm. If you agree with what the enemy is saying and allow him to stay, he's going to stay. Right. As long as the welcome mat is laid out there for him. Right. But if you tell him, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. If you tell him, Satan, get behind me. If you tell him, Satan, God is able to do just what he said he was going to yes, do. Yes, yes, yes. He'll get behind you. The Bible says resist the devil. And he'll flee from you. Mm -hmm. Even when Jesus was on the mount, he told him, this is what the word says. That's right. This is what the word says. This is what the word says. But Satan said, but I can give you this. I can do this. I can give you this. I can make this. But he said, this is what the word says. And even in your hopelessness, you still got to believe what God has said. Yes. Even in your despair, you still have got to stand on the word of God. You see, Jesus was so confident in who he was and in what he was there to do. And if you believe, you have got to have that same confidence. Yeah. You've got to have that same confidence that I am the, who I am. I am who God has called me to be. I am victorious. I am, I am, I am. Even if you have to put people out of your business, even if you have to shut some folks out and cut some people off, you might have to turn away from Dalton Thomas, but just hold fast to what God, to what you believe. Hold fast to what you believe. Everything that gathers around you may seem negative and hopeless, but tell it, honey, I can't be around you because I'm believing God for something. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are doubting your dreams. A lot of people are doubting your expectations. A lot of people are doubting what you want God to do, but you got to put them out. You have the authority to put them out. But the thing about us, we don't want to lose our friends. We don't want to lose family members. We don't want to lose those that we're close to. We don't want to lose the money that we think is supporting us. We don't want to lose that job that we think we can't get no better job, but it's time to put it out. It's time to put it out so that God can do what he wants to do in our lives. Well, the funeral had already begun. The people thought the best Jesus could do was offer some kinds of words about this little girl. The people thought all Jesus could do was maybe sing a hymn and give the Old Testament and the New Testament. The people thought, well, maybe all Jesus could do was read the obituary. People thought maybe all Jesus could do, amen, is give the word of thanks. Thank y'all for coming. Thank y'all for coming to see about it. So people thought all Jesus could do was maybe sing a song. Maybe. But guess what? Not about this little girl. It was not about the girl, but it was for the girl. Mm -hmm. It was not about her. Mm -hmm. Situation wasn't even about her. Right, right, right. Sometimes God just wants to use us. Sometimes God just wants to see if we still going to believe. 
Sometimes God just wants to use us so we'll be able to testify to somebody else what he did for me. He can also do the same thing for you. But Jesus gave some remarks, all right. Even in the hopelessness, he said, all hope is not lost. Even in our recklessness, he said, I can put it back together. Even in our lifelessness, he said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. The Bible says that he looked at the damsel and he took her by hand and said unto her, Talitha Kuma, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, Arise. Something that we need to see in that. He took the damsel by the hand. You need to take what God has said by the hand. Sometimes we say take the bull by the horn. Which basically just means we need to hold it in our hands and never let it go. Regardless of what's happening, regardless of what comes our way, regardless of what's trying to turn us away, we need to take God's word and hold on to it and never let it go. I don't care what the enemy says. I don't care what the situation says. I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care what the job says. I don't care what the boss man said. I'm still holding on to what God has said because a promise is still a promise. It's still a promise. And the Bible says, and straightway, uh -huh. which means immediately, uh -huh. the damsel arose and walked. Yeah. Maybe it hasn't happened for you immediately because you haven't taken it by the hand. Mm -hmm. Maybe you haven't put the guests out of the house yet. Mm -hmm. Maybe you haven't let go of what's hindering you. Mm -hmm. Maybe you haven't let loose of what has come to bind you like the man in the tombs. Yeah. Maybe you need to get some of that stuff to the pigs. There's a saying that says a mind is a terrible thing to waste. But I always like to say a waste is a terrible thing to mind. Stuff that's wasting. Why keep putting your time and attention on that? It's hindering you. It's holding you up from what God wants to do in your life. A waste is a terrible thing to mind. It's a terrible thing. But the Bible says, people of God, straightway the damsel arose and walked. And she was of age of 12 years. And they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should believe it and commanded that someone should give her something to eat. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Mm -hmm. When you believe it and God does it, even in the face of your enemies, he's going to lay out a table. David put it like this, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Anybody ready to eat? Yes. Anybody hungry? Yes. Amen. Anybody want to really show the enemy how great your God is? Anybody really want the enemy to see you tried to stop me? But look at me now. I'm at the head of the table. Yeah. You tried to bind me up. You tried to make me doubt my God. But guess what? Yeah. Now I'm sitting here eating at the table. Okay, Five-star meal. Five-course meal. Hey, Amen. Not just yeah. no little applesauce. But I'm eating a big meal. Thank you, Lord. I prepare a table before me. In the presence of my enemies. Because I believe. I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. If I didn't believe, I would have fainted. If I didn't believe, I would have failed. If I didn't believe, I would have gave up. If I would didn't believe, I would have threw in the towel a long time ago. Yeah. But if you believe it, Thank tell you, somebody, God can do it. God can do it. If you believe it, you believe it. amen. God can do it. Amen. 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 Come on and clap your hands. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thanks be unto God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Amen. Come on. Let's give Elder Lynch another hand clap. Amen. Amen. A praise. Amen. Thank God for the word. Let's thank the Lord for the word of God on today. Amen. Glory to God. How many believers I have in the house? 
Amen. Any believers in the house? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, don't be afraid. Amen. Only believe. Amen. Glory to God. You got to increase your faith. Amen. Glory to God so that you might see. Amen. What God is wanting to do that you might see the manifestation of the word of God. Amen. We thank God again. Let's bless the Lord one more time. Amen. For the word. Amen. Thank you to our listening audience today. Amen. We appreciate you joining on. Amen. To uh, be a part of the refuge experience. Amen. We thank you so very much. Amen. For taking the time. Amen. To come. Amen. And hear what thus saith the Lord. Thank you. Amen. For taking the time. Amen. To share your precious moments with us. Amen. On today. Amen. Anybody on the line. Amen. That wishes to be saved. That's not saved. Amen. This is your opportunity. Amen. To give your life to the Lord. Would you just type in the chat. Amen. That I want to be saved. Amen. And we'll contact you today. Amen. To show you. Amen. The road to salvation. Amen. Glory to God. Anybody on the line that's requesting prayer. Amen. Would you type in the chat. I need prayer. Amen. And we'll be praying for you. Amen. If you have a personal need that you cannot put in the chat, just send us a message. Amen. In the inbox there. Amen. Glory to God. And we'll get your personal amen prayer request. Amen. And just know amen, that we believe and we stand on the scripture that the fervent and effectual prayer of a righteous man, amen, avail of much. And so we believe in the power of prayer, amen. We believe that God can do all things, amen. We read it in the scripture. Is there anything too hard for the Lord, amen? And the answer really is no, it's not, amen. God can do anything. God can do everything, amen. And so we thank him today, amen, that he has the ability and the capacity Amen. To do all things but fail. And so we believe God today that God can turn your situation around. We believe, amen, that God will move on your behalf. Amen. We just believe that. Amen. Glory to God. There was a scripture in the Old Testament that said, Lord, help my unbelief. Amen. Glory to God. But we stand in faith today. Amen. Believing. Amen. That God can do that which you're asking and that which you're requesting of him on today. Amen. Again, thank you so much. Amen. For joining online. Amen. Again. Amen. If you want to be a blessing, if you can. Amen. Not necessarily want to. Amen. But if you can be a blessing. Amen. We're asking that you will be a blessing to refuge. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We do need your prayers. We do need your support. Amen. Glory to God. By your giving, by your financial uh, seeds. Amen. By your offerings. Amen. Glory to God. Send us your tithe. Send us your offering. Amen. For the Lord love of a cheerful giver. Amen. And so we believe that if you're being blessed, amen, won't you share? Won't you be a blessing that would allow us to continue to do what we do? Amen. You can do that then via Cash App. Amen. That's dollar sign Cash, uh, dollar sign Refuge House of God. Amen. All one word. Amen. You'll see the purple and white logo that says Refuge House of God. Amen. Give a uh, Refuge House of God, Charlotte, North Carolina. Amen. PayPal, paypal.me. Amen. Forward slash Refuge House of God. You'll see that same purple and white logo that says Refuge House of God. Amen. So we want to make sure. Amen. If you don't have any of those online channels, amen. Mail us your check. Mail us your money order to P.O. Box 38733, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Again, it's P.O. Box 38733, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. We thank you so much. Amen. We'll be praying for you. Amen. We want you to know that we love you today. Amen. And we bid you God's speed. We pray that you have an awesome week this week. Amen. Join us again on next week. Should the Lord delay his coming. Amen. We'll be right here. Amen. We love you with the love of the Lord. Go in grace and go in peace. And sin no more in Jesus' name.